Good morning. I'm Casey Johnson, the assistant principal of Calusa High School. It's my pleasure to open this year's Calusa High School commencement exercises. I'd like to introduce Pablo Barrera, the student body, excuse me, student body president who will lead us in the salute of our nation's flag. Please stand. Salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Out of consideration for who are all in audience, I would like to make a few requests at this time. First, would you please remain seated throughout the ceremony so everyone is able to see and hear their graduates. We also ask that you maintain proper social distancing throughout the ceremony and follow guidelines posted throughout the stadium. Also, students will not be convening on the football field after the ceremony is finished. Please meet your student in front of the school after the ceremony is complete. We appreciate your cooperation. For those in attendance who brought balloons in celebration of your student's achievement, we ask you to please hand them to a high school representative so they can properly place them on the sides of the stands. Thank you for understanding. At this time, I will ask you to rise again for the playing of our Star Spangled Banner. Please rise. Please be seated. At this time, I would like to introduce Calusa High School Principal, Mr. Josh Mason. Welcome everyone. My name is Josh Mason, and I'm honored to be standing in front of you today as the principal of Calusa High School. Graduating seniors, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I can say with conviction, the class of 2020 at CHS is truly one of a kind. You've endured so much the past few months. However, you persevered through unprecedented adversity, and now you sit here as graduates at Calusa High School. Although the last quarter of your senior year didn't go as planned, I hope each and every one of you learned from this experience because you can truly learn a lot from the adversity you endured the past few months. Adversity will appear in your lives often, and when it appears, you'll be confronted with two choices. You can stand in front of it and face it and accept the challenges that are presented, or you can cower and let it get the best of you. If you accept the challenges that are presented when facing adversity, don't expect the path to be easy. It will take many long hours of hard work, dedication, and sometimes you will have to step outside your comfort zone and try new things. The path to success will often be long and it will often be a struggle. However, when you succeed at achieving your goals, 
It will feel amazing. All those long hours of hard work and struggle will turn into feelings of satisfaction, accomplishment, and most importantly, pride. See, graduates, that's what life is. It's an endless process of struggle and success, struggle and success. In the forthcoming years, as you're in your first year of college, or you're out there looking for your first job, you might fail your first college exam, or you might get rejected after your first five to 10 job interviews. You experience the initial feelings of defeat and sorrow. But remember, just like the last few months of your senior year, the adversity you experienced in the fourth quarter made you stronger, smarter, and more resilient. So no matter how tough the struggles get, no matter how frustrated you are, don't give in to adversity. I want all of you to keep moving forward and achieve, those, to achieve the dreams you've always had for yourself. Please don't let the challenges of adversity get the best of you. Don't ever let your doubts or anyone else's doubts about you distract you from achieving your dreams. That brings me to the second lesson that I want to discuss today, which is to never ever listen to the people who doubt you in your life. And I know that at some point in your life, all of you have faced a doubter or two. Trust me, I know what that's like. You see, graduates, I grew up in a small town like all of you. My family didn't have a lot of money. My parents never went to college. And there were plenty of people who doubted whether a kid like me had what it took to reach my goals. I remember one of those people who doubted me in particular. She was a brilliant professor whose creative writing course I enrolled into at Chico State my sophomore year. Now, let me say this, I aced her class, but I know she didn't believe in me after the first essay I submitted in her course. I remember her comments on that essay after it was graded. Please see me after class. That is not the feedback that makes you feel good about yourself. I saw her after class that day, and she talked about improving my grammar and challenged me to be creative when writing essays in her class. She wasn't mean about it. She was simply challenging me to get better. However, when she told me I'd really need to improve my writing skills to succeed in her course, it didn't feel good. I left that evening feeling defeated, but I knew I only had one choice. I had to learn how to improve my writing skills to succeed in her class. I worked hard throughout that semester to improve my writing skills, and I spent many long hours trying to craft quality essays. It wasn't always fun because it was often a struggle. However, I remember experiencing the overwhelming feelings of joy and accomplishment when I received an A in her course. When I submitted my final essay in that class, her comments on my final paper read, good job, you really surprised me this semester. I remember leaving her classroom that evening, believing I could I really achieve something great. However, I didn't attribute the greatness to my achievement in her course. It was due to the fact that I realized if I worked hard at achieving a goal, I will probably be successful, no matter what obstacles I have to overcome or who doubts me along the way. I still do not consider myself a great writer, but I worked hard to earn an A in that course, and I still try to improve my writing skills to this very day. It's a constant struggle, but I'm not going to listen to people who doubt me. I'm going to continue to improve my writing skills to the best of my ability because I want to be the best version of myself as a writer. So graduates, when you, when you encounter those people who doubt you, that boss who doesn't think you deserve a promotion, that professor who doesn't believe in your academic abilities, don't get angry. Don't get anxious or insecure. Get better, work harder, and always be the best version of yourself. Because trust me, in the end, success is always your best revenge against all those people who doubted you along the way. Before I offer my closing statements today, I'd be remiss if I didn't recognize two groups of wonderful people. Parents in the bleachers, would you please stand right now? <laughs> Graduates, I want you to give your parents a standing ovation right now for all the support, sacrifice, and love they have given you over the years. Parents, you guys are amazing. Please be seated. I'd also be remiss if I didn't recognize the outstanding performance of the CHS staff this school year. Teachers, counselors, support staff, MOT, administrators, your performance this school year was nothing short of amazing. I know you had many doubters along the way. However, I'm glad you didn't listen to them because you performed impressively well during this crazy school year. Thank you for all that you do for our students, and thank you for being an amazing group of people to work with.
In closing, Class 2020, I am extremely proud of each and every one of you. I wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors, and I hope you enjoyed your experience as a Clouse High School Red Hawk. Thank you. At this time, Clouse High School Counselor, Mrs. Bibiana McBeal, will recognize the various groups wearing stoles. As you may notice, a lot of our students are wearing different colored stoles or cords. Each of these represents a different accomplishment the student has achieved during their time at Calusa High School. Seniors, please stand if you participated in a CHS athletic team at any point throughout your four years. Please give our students a round of applause. You may be seated. The graduates wearing the sil silver or gray stoles tonight are athletic completers. The 19 students wearing the stole completed eight sports in four years. Would all students wearing the stole and all CHS coaches please rise and be recognized? You may be seated. We have three students wearing FBLA stoles, which signifies the completion of the business pathway, earning recognition as champion of Calusa FBLA and serving as an FBLA officer. Two of those students are also wearing FBLA cords, which signifies completion of the FBLA future business leader degrees. Please stand. You may be seated. We have 29 students who are ESA completers and are wearing medals with a green and white ribbon. Would all ESA completers please stand? You may be seated. Wearing the teal, teal color stoles are our leadership pathway completers. The 11 students wearing the stole completed four years in leadership and served as an officer during their senior year in the leadership class. Would our leadership pathway completers please stand? You may be seated. Wearing the gold stoles are our Ag Pathway completers. The 17 students wearing this stole completed three years of Ag classes, including their senior year, with at least 3.0 GPA in their Ag classes. Everyone wearing an Ag Completer stole, please stand and be recognized. You may be seated. Wearing the purple stoles tonight are our visual and performing arts completers. The 31 students wearing this stole completed four years of classes in the arts. Classes meeting this requirement include art, music, theater, or welding class. All students wearing the VAPA stole, please rise. You may be seated. We also have students today wearing the black stole, which represents students' completion of all A through G requirements, thus making them immediately eligible for admission to the UC and the CSUs. Will all 31 students who achieve this accomplishment please stand? You may be seated. We have seven students wearing the green stole, and they completed three to four years of Spanish classes with a B minus or higher, and were a paid member of Spanish club. Will the students wearing the stole representing the Spanish pathway stand? You may be seated. The Cardinal and Cor Gold Cord signifies California Scholastic Federation. 
Students must earn CSF honors a minimum of five semesters, indicating academic achievement throughout grades 10 through 12, with one semester of achievement being attained in their senior year. Will the seven students who achieve this academic honor as well stand? You may be seated. And lastly, we have one graduate wearing the blue stole with the American flag, and they have committed to serving in a military branch to serve and protect our country. This year, like I said, we have one individual wearing a military stole. Please stand for him. this time, the Calusa Unified School Board President, Melissa Yerkes-Ortiz, will have a few introductions and thoughts to share. I'm Melissa Yerksa Ortiz, and I have the honor of serving as school board president. I'd like to introduce my fellow board members. If you'll please stand. Kathy Weitzel. Chris McAllister. Kelly Griffith Garcia. And Mike Fennessy. As, our, as board members, it is our job to guide district policies in a way that helps our students and staff thrive. We believe wholeheartedly in our district-wide vision to provide, in cooperation with our families, an, an excellent, well-balanced education where students gain skills necessary for a success in an ever-changing world. Especially that ever-changing world part. Yeah, we're there, right? So hello, class of 2020. 20. 2020, 20? Wow. <laughs> Can we just give them a round of applause again? Yeah. Wow. So raise your hand if you thought the end of your senior year would go this way. Right. Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> That's probably a good lesson for all of us. Life never really goes the way that we think it will. And the sooner we all learn that lesson, the better off we are. In an effort to remind us of that lesson, I'd like to propose a modification to an age-old question. What do you want to do when you grow up? <laughs> Can we just please change it to something like, what do you want to do next? Or what talents do you have that you could develop and pursue? Because that's all really we should be asking each other, whether we're 18 or 58. The old question of, what do you want to do when you grow up, put so much pressure on us. I was in your seat exactly 20 years ago, graduated in the class of 2000, and I remember the unnecessary pressure that that question puts on students. So when you think about your next steps, think about what's next. In hindsight, nope. They say that hindsight offers 2020 vision. In hindsight, would you have done different things differently if you knew that this was the year that everything would change? That this is the year that would demand resilience, total personal responsibility, and a level of grace for everyone around you. The way I see it, the global coronavirus shutdown was your official welcome to adulthood. You got the crash course. You have officially been catapulted into adulthood. It's all on you now. Congratulations. Some people don't receive that nudge until they're kicked off their parents' insurance at 26. So effectively, you have an eight-year head start. You're welcome. Uh, I'd like to do a little class of 2020 by the numbers. Of the graduating students this year, all 91 of you chose to participate in this celebration. 
I'm very proud of that. We worked hard to get this through, so thank you for being here and supporting those efforts. One chose to join the military. Can we give him another round of hot applause, please? <laughs> Nearly 70% of you chose to attend a community college or four-year university as your next step. And all 91 graduating seniors have worked hard and shown an incredible level of resilience. Look out, world. Here they come. <laughs> to our graduates, I say good luck. Follow your talents and find something you love to do. Don't be afraid to change the plan when the world around you changes. Then come back here and raise another crop of awesome, hardworking, resilient kids like you. Congratulations. I'd like to now announce the salutatorian, Shana Laux. Good morning, CHS staff, parents, and of course, the class of 2020. So this is how it ends. Not exactly the fairy tale ending we all imagined when we were promised a graduation four years ago. Back then, we thought we had it all planned out. That we just had to make it four years, and in the last few months of our senior year, we would get prom, our final walk through our childhood schools, a last trip together, a semester of memories with our best friends and favorite teachers, but most importantly, a graduation where all of the people we love would get to watch us walk the stage to complete the first chapter of the rest of our lives. But as it so often does, life had other plans for us. This chapter of our life may never get the proper ending and closure that it deserves, but that does not mean it's the end of the story. In fact, it's quite the opposite. It's merely at the beginning of the rest of our lives. So let's start this new chapter by saying thank you. Thank you to the parents and family members who helped guide us and shape us into who we are today. Thank you to every teacher that never gave up on us, to every friend and best friend that helped us create irreplaceable memories, and thank you to every person who has come into our lives and influenced us, no matter how brief of a moment they stayed. If you ever got the chance to know me, then you know how much I like quotes. And if you don't know me, well, just know that I really like quotes. One of my favorite excerpts is a Latin quote once said by first Saint Sir Francis Drake, which is sic parvis magna, essentially translating to thus from small beginnings, great things come. I admire this quote because to me, it holds hope for the future, that it does not matter if we came from a small town, we could always end up wherever we want and achieve whatever we set our minds to as long as we're determined and work for it. The last 18 years here have been our small beginning. Now it is time to take what we have learned and achieve great things. For this is a beginning that is about to end, but the ending is really just the beginning. Because what is coming is greater than what has gone. And as William Shakespeare once said, some were born great, some achieved greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. Whichever one of these things each of us are, we still have one thing in common. We all possess the ability to make something great come out of our lives. If there is anything that I've learned within the last four years of being in Ms. Stewart's class, it is that life is all about change, and that it is the rate of change that can be more harmful than change itself. Because change is neither good nor bad, it, is mere, it just merely is, and it is how life has survived and will continue to survive. So, class of 2020, do not fear change, embrace it. Without change, nothing in this world would ever grow or evolve, and no one in this world would be who they were meant to be. I know this is not how any of us planned our senior year being like, but at least we still have the 18 years of good, bad, and interesting memories and stories to hold on to forever. Thank you all for being a part of my experience growing up in this town, and especially for the last four years of my life. As we each leave this part of our childhood behind, I will leave you with this final quote from the timeless Dr. Seuss. Do not cry because it is over. Smile because it happened. 
Thank you. It is now my honor to introduce our valedictorian, earning the highest academic honor at Calusa High School, Mr. Edgar Cruz Vasquez. Good morning, my fellow graduates, friends, family, and administration. First of all, I want to congratulate each and every one of you for making it this far. 2020 has truly put us through the ringer. From the murder hornets and COVID-19 to not realizing Stever posted another assignment, we've been through it all. And although life has not been fair, although we have lost many of our final senior experiences, remember that this is an important milestone in our lives. Many of us have dedicated dozens of hours into sports, clubs, volunteering, and most importantly, into building a community. Our work has not been wasted. I firmly believe each action we have taken has been a step into, our, into building our futures. These past four years, I have seen what the world has to offer without ever having to leave our small town. The friendships and connections, the smiles and laughs remind us that we are here for each other as a community. Our time in Calusa was not for nothing. It will never be for nothing. It meant something. When we leave for college this far, fall, or embark on our new paths, maybe we won't ever recall our six period science lesson from work again, nor the never ending slides from art history. But the connections that many of our teachers worked so hard to forge will remain in our hearts. Our teachers, our friends, will continue to remind us that we have a place here in Calusa. Calusa is by no means incredible. We are just one in a thousand dots on the map. Cars flow through the area like any other town on any other corner of the world, unknowingly overlooking the richness and depth of every beating heart on the sidewalk. No, we are not incredible, but that is not to say that Calusa is not special. We might complain about the buzz of small town life, how we have to drive 30 minutes to catch the latest Avengers movie, or drive an hour to find a big city. But to each person in this town, I can see that this small place of ours has transformed us into better people. Calusa has nourished our dreams and goals, knowing we might not return one day, but making sure our time here is well spent. Our town has kindled our fiery individuality, joining the hundreds of dazzling flames that dance in our streets, our community. Solo hacemos muy poco, pero juntos podemos cambiar el mundo. Alone we accomplish little, but together we can change the world. Thank you Calusa High School, and thank you Class of 2020, for even within our flaws, we have grown strong together. We will be successful together. You are unforgettable. Thank you. This brings us to the presentation of awards portion of this evening. We are honored to welcome Dan Griffith, who will be giving out scholarships from the Calusa County Scholarship Foundation. with the Clouse County Scholarship Foundation. Um, we're a volunteer organization, and what we do is we accept donations from various individuals, clubs, organizations, and they set criteria for uh, those students or for that award. And we match the students to the award that we're given to give out. So this year was quite a challenge because we weren't able to meet in person and nor we were were we able to interview the students. So we worked with the counselors here at the school and they were a great help. And we made the following choices. Um, Pablo Barrera Budos received the Donald and Diane Bransford. <laughs> Olivia Jarrett received the John S. Abley Memorial. 
Hawaiian Farm Credit Services Award, the California Family Foods Award, and the Williams Volunteer Firefighters Award. Annalise Lave received the Calusa County Corona Classic Memorial. Alejandra Barragan received the Butte Creek Farms Award, uh, the Jim Redding Memorial given by the Goose Alliance Club, uh, Charles T. Excuse me, Manuel Morales de la Vega received the Charles T. Yerkes Memorial. Um, Manuel also received the Calusa Industrial Properties Award. <laughs> Joanna Thira received the Fernandez Family Award and the Susan Brown Memorial. <laughs> Edgar Cruz Velasquez received uh, Empire Farms Award and the Calusa Women's Club Award. Thea Munoz Silva received an award also from Empire Farms and the Calusa Rotary Club Award. A new award this year, we got some funding from the estate of uh, Paul Stottlemyer. And uh, so this year was the, the first year for this funding, and the award went to Charles Dunn. Kenzie Thompson received the McCullum Memorial, and the, and the California Highway Patrol has a 520 Squad Club Award. <laughs> Bailey McCarty received another award, Jim Redding Memorial, that was sponsored by the Clues Alliance Club. And she also received a Tom Griffith Memorial, um, a member in Williams. Jacob Arce received a scholarship from us, the Calusa County Scholarship Foundation. <laughs> Christian Reyna received uh, an award in memory of Dawn Sissy Dowden, and also an award um, in memory of Joe Candido and Catherine Candido Strickland, who, were, who went to high school here in the 40s. Cole Simmons received another award from the Calusa Rotary Club. And Elizabeth Hernandez Montajano also received the Calusa Rotary Club. And Jesus Rodriguez Garcia also received a Calusa Rotary Rebecca Randolph received the Davison Family Memorial in memory of Jim Davison. <laughs> Christian Draves received the, an award uh, also in memory of Don Sissy Doubt. Spring Valley Lodge Award uh, out of Arbuckle. The Les Schwab Tire Award. And the Fouch and Son of Williams. Priscilla Morales received the Cam, Cam Lee Memorial. <laughs> Abigail Galvez Rubio received another award from the Coos County Scholarship Foundation. <laughs> Letty Davalos received uh, an award in memory of Jim Redding offered by Redding Oil Company. <laughs> Grace Meek received an award from Ram Trucking. <laughs> Jennifer Avila Perez also received an award from Ram Trucking. <laughs> Cynthia Velasquez received the James Granzella Memorial <laughs> and also the West Butte Realty Award. And last is Javier Ramirez received the Kurt Keller Memorial offered by the Goosa County Chamber of Commerce. Thank you.
behalf of the Calusa Athletic Department, I'll be presenting this year's uh, Athletic Senior Award to the Female and Male Athlete of the Year. The Calusa High School Senior Athlete of the Year is given to a senior male and female athlete who have demonstrated an unyielding desire to compete on the athletic fields of competition to their very best of their ability. Their dedication and success has given them honor and recognition at Calusa High School, within Calusa County, and throughout CIF Northern Section. To honor their achievements, three males and three female senior athletes are chosen from a number of criteria and they are voted by the varsity coaches here at Calusa High School in order to choose their most outstanding senior male and female athlete. The 2020 CHS Male Athlete of the Year spent parts of four seasons on the varsity baseball team and was part of a league championship in JV football his sophomore season. He played on the Division IV runner-up baseball team during his junior year. During his senior year, he was the captain of the baseball team. The football season as a senior, he was a two-way starter, voted all-league for the SVL, and was also chosen to play in the North-South Lions All-Star football game. All totaled, this young man played 10 seasons of sport while at Calusa High School. The 2020 Male Athlete of the Year is Xavier Lopez. The 2020 CHS Female Athlete of the Year spent four years on the varsity basketball team as a starter and was the captain her junior and senior seasons. In volleyball, she was chosen to all-section team three times and was also nominated to the all-area team three times. She was a three-time all-SVL league selection and was voted league MVP during her senior season. During her career, she was on two section championship teams, one in softball her freshman year and the other in volleyball during her senior campaign. This young lady was selected to play in both the North Section and the Sacramento Optimus All-Star Volleyball Games following her senior season. She completed or competed in 12 seasons of sport while at Calusa High School. The 2020 Female Athlete of the Year Miss Anna, Annie Lay. Sorry, I gotta get to my spot. The wind's blowing all over the place. Okay. Now the time that everybody's been waiting for. It's now time to present the 2020 Clues High School graduates. Edgar, <laughs> don't forget to get your picture right there, okay? Here we go. First one, Edgar Cruz Vasquez. <laughs> Shayna Laux. <laughs> Olivia Jarrett. <laughs> Annalise Kathleen Lay. <laughs> Bailey May McCarty. Alejandra Melchor Baragon. <laughs> Katia Silva. <laughs> Christian Jose Reyna. Antonio Alejandre Jr. <laughs> J. 
Jacob Thomas Arce. Juan Arenas Gonzalez. Jennifer Avila. Joshua Baker. Pablo Barrera Munoz. JC Nina Marie Brackett. Nakaya Quincy Bryan. Emma Contreras. Kobe Castanon. Anissa Solis. Martin Contreras Duran. Carly Frippen Lay. <laughs> Kirsten Draves. <laughs> Charles Dunn. <laughs> Caitlin Espindola. Melissa Estrada. Abby Galvez. Zariah Garcia Ramirez. Lucas Sergio Guerin. <laughs> Jerry Gonzalez. <laughs> Carlos Gonzalez Yin. <laughs> Jacqueline Gonzalez Ortega. William Dean Grable. <laughs> Christian Gutierrez. <laughs> Rocky Gutierrez. <laughs> Lexi Hernandez. Rudy Hernandez. Victor Hernandez Contreras. Elizabeth Yasmin Hernandez Montajano. over that cord, guys. <laughs> Logan Icono. <laughs> Mariah Jaime Galvez. <laughs> Veronica Hadigi Baca. <laughs> Darlene Juarez. <laughs> Jewel Carr Kesterson. <laughs> Natalie.
Madeline Janine Karegalos. Taylor Ray Greb. Cynthia Lomelli Sandoval. Christian Lopez. Itzel Lopez. Xavier Lopez. Sylvina Luna. Brady Maddox. Cody Maltby. Jasmine Martinez. Grace Meek. Yesel Mitermonte Sarbia. Priscilla Alexandra Morales Chavez. Manuel Morales de la Vega. Hunter Brent Nobles. Rolina Osorio. John Price. Edith Quintana Moreno. Javier Ramirez. Jesus Ramirez. Marco Zuniga. Rebecca Adele Randolph. Adrian Manuel Reyes. Angel Riggins. Damian Rodriguez. Jesus Joseph Rodriguez Garcia. Rihanna Chloe Ruiz. Jesse Sagoon. Isaiah Saloon. JC Schumacher Ash. Amelia Guadalupe Silva. Cole Matthew Simmons. Brianna Lynn Sauters. Francisco Soto. Riley Stice.
Hannah Taylor. Mackenzie Thompson. <laughs> Joanna Itzel Tolentino Lira. <laughs> Trent Townsend. <laughs> Giselle Valencia. Annalie Valencia. <laughs> Alan Vega Urube. <laughs> Cynthia Leonor Velasquez. <laughs> Dominic Alan Luis Velasquez. <laughs> Isabella Brunel Exfolius. <laughs> Juletti Arubula. <laughs> Amber Morales. Will the rest of the graduates please stand? Yeah. Graduates, you have met all local and state requirements for graduation from Calusa High School. Yeah. By the authority vested in me by the Calusa Unified School District Board of Trustees in the state of California, I hereby confer upon the class of 2020 of Calusa High School the diploma of graduation. Please move your tassel from right to left. respect for the class of 2020, please remain seated. The seniors elected to play their senior song as they exit the stadium. The song will now be played. Go for it, Edgar. I wish somebody would have told me, babe. Good old days Thank <laughs> you. 